jump right into the message here. And uh, so if we can keep the volume up a little loud, just so I can talk quietly, um, that'd be great. Romans chapter 7 is where I'm going to be reading out of. Romans in chapter 7. Thanks for coming today. We're glad you're here. And we're looking for a good day. We had an early, the 930 service was packed. And a good crowd. It wasn't packed, but it was a big crowd. And so um, we are blessed. And uh, God spoke to us then. And uh, so Romans chapter 7. And I want to talk today about when trying hard isn't enough. When trying hard isn't enough. Or when trying hard doesn't cut it. Romans chapter 7. <clears throat> I'm going to start at verse 15. And I'm going to read through verse 19, and then I'll read a couple of the verses. It says, For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, and the evil which I would not, that I do. And verse 22, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing into captivity, making me into captivity, the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the chance to be in your house today. Lord, I thank you for a voice, Lord, though it's not as strong as usual. Thank you. I can speak your words, and I pray that I would certainly do that in truth, that your Holy Spirit would empower this message and that you'd impact souls. We need the Holy Spirit's power. We need the Word of God to be rightly divided, and we need you to speak to hearts individually, Lord. From somebody who doesn't know you as Savior, I pray they'd come to that decision. To someone who's just... Uh, needs to fine-tune a very uh, elite spiritual life. I pray everybody would grow today and be transformed uh, through your power and help us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> in verse 15, um, uh, Paul is lamenting here that what he wants to do, he doesn't do, and what he doesn't want to do, he does. He, he, that, that There's something controlling uh, that making him not do what he wants to do. Verse 15, for that which... Uh, which I do, I allow not. In other words, I don't want to do that, but I do it. Um, for what I would, I do not. But what I hate, that I do. We can all f lament that sometimes. I don't want to do this, but I keep on doing it. I want to do this, but I can't seem to do that thing. Verse 19, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil that I would not, that I do. You do the opposite of what you are trying to do. When you're trying to do right, it seems like it's very hard to do right. When you're trying not to do wrong, it seems uh, very difficult not to do wrong. It's just uh, you want to do a good thing, and it seems like you can't do it. You're trying not to do a bad thing, and it seems like you can't stop doing that bad thing. And even the Apostle Paul is lamenting this. He has a heart to do right. We see that certainly in verse 22, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So there's the desire. I have delight to do God's will. I want to do the right thing. Verse 23, um, we learn that there, there, there is a war. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Captivity is calling it now. It's a pretty tough situation. And he concludes that because, look, I'm trying to do this. I end up doing this. I don't want to do this. I end up doing it. I, I'm being brought into captivity to the sin that's in me. And he's, then he kind of says, he laments just his very nature. Verse 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Who's going to deliver me? It's like Jesus said, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. In other words, I want to. He says, I delight in the law of the inward man. I want to do God's will. I want to do the right thing, but I don't. It's, it's what the Bible calls depravity. Depravity is a human nature that, that when, when the fall of mankind came in the Garden of Eden, we got 
a nature in us. We were made in the image of God, which was right and beautiful and holy. We got this fallen nature which wants to do wrong. And the Bible defines it as our flesh, okay? As we go forward, we'll understand our flesh we're talking about here because we have to separate it like God separates it. <clears throat> so, you want to go and uh, you stub your toe. You don't have to say, you know what? I just can't seem to cuss. I've got to learn how to cuss so I can cuss when I stub my toe. It's not how it works, right? No. You're, you're, you automatically do that. <laughs> it's built in. Okay? You, you got somebody does something wrong to you and wounds you or hurts you. Your body, your mind will naturally, because it's depraved, dwell on the wrong thing. You yeah, had 20 good people treat you right, but all your mind will go to is the one who treated you wrong. Because it's natural. It's our fallen nature, and that's what we do. And, and that's, that's the way it goes. We naturally want to seek revenge. I don't want to seek revenge. I don't want to say this. <clears throat> How many times have we said, you know what, I shouldn't say this, but and there it goes. And you say what you shouldn't have said. I know I shouldn't have said that, but I couldn't help myself. That's the problem right there. That's the problem we have, and that's the, the, the nature we have, and we're going to struggle with. And we're talking about this. Our spirits want to, but our flesh does not want to cooperate. It goes against our very desires. It goes against our very desires. It can be an alcoholic not want to drink anymore. It can be a person who can't control their temper, and they want to control the temper. It can be a person who's proud and doesn't want to be proud anymore. It can be a person with a, uh, an addiction to pornography, and they want to stop. It can be a person who overeats. Why does food taste so good? I've often said before, you know, I wish my tongue would stop tasting when it was time to stop eating. Because I'm done, but man, the food's still there and it still tastes good, right? I'm going to keep on going. I, I just, I wish that it kind of went together, but my appetite's still there. My stomach says, you are done, buddy. And then I keep on going. Because that's our nature. Is it wants to do wrong and it, it, it's, it's hard to control it. And so <clears throat> what happens is we, we try harder. I'm going to try harder to do this thing. I'm going to try harder to be faithful to church. I'm going to try harder to not say those things. I'm going to try harder to not get angry. And that trying harder does not work. And the effort, what it leaves you is frustrated. Man, I tried so hard. And then you discourage and you throw your hands up and say, why even try? Because it doesn't do any good. I want to say trying harder is is not exactly what you need to do. And I want to teach you a little bit, a few things. When trying harder is not cutting it, you're trying really hard to quit getting angry, you're trying really hard to quit uh, cussing, you're trying really hard to be faithful to church, you're trying really hard to read your Bible every day, you're trying really hard to love someone who's unlovable, you're trying really hard to forgive. And it's not working. Okay? I want to teach you a little bit about what to do in that situation. And what we do when trying harder is not cutting it. Number one is you move the battle into the spiritual realm, not the flesh. Let's go back and look at uh, verse 25. Uh, I thank God, or verse 24, who's going to deliver me from this, this bondage I'm in? My flesh. He says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the answer. He says, the answer to my deliverance is through Jesus Christ. So then, with my mind, I serve the law of God, but with the flesh, I serve the law of sin. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. Let me explain to you. Romans 6 tells you we need to be holy and be transformed. Romans 7 is the frustration of this flesh makes it really hard because here's the, here's the deal. It's what is causing the problem is our flesh, our nature, and that's us. And you're fighting against yourself. But when you do, do what the Bible says here and divide the spiritual realm from the physical, and then you let the spiritual take over, the spiritual is stronger than the physical, and the spiritual will give you the victory. But over and over it says the spirit of life uh, the Holy Spirit has made me free from the law of sin and death. <clears throat> you can go down 
Um, verse uh, 6, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because a carnal mind is enmity against God, your natural mind is fallen. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. That's why, look, the, the, the carnal mind, the fleshly mind, the mind that is worldly, the normal natural mind that is not spiritual, it has bad desires. Look at entertainment. Try to find clean entertainment without cussing, nudity, or immorality anywhere in it. People want to watch bad things because of the fallen nature of the mind. And we have that, and we've got to go and enter into the spiritual realm and realize the spiritual realm is what needs to take over. First of all, you need to separate the spiritual from the physical. Chapter 7 and verse 18, and I'll explain that, but look how clear this is. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Notice he says, in me, in my flesh is no good thing. So what do you have? <clears throat> you and I have this nature that's been given to us by God, made in the image of God, and then the Holy Spirit inside of us saying, you need to do the right thing. We have that. That's good. That's where he says, I desire to do the right thing. I desire, I, with my mind, I serve the will of God. I want to do what's right. And then we've got this fallen nature, which is our flesh, that says, I don't want to do right. This side says, God tells me to forgive. This side says, I want to forgive. I want to get revenge. This side says, I want to be joyful. This side says, I want to be angry. This side says, I want to say blessings and, and speak good words. This side says, you can't control your tongue. And you blurt out things and then say, I should have said that. And by the way, it does damage and you regret it. You knew it was going to do that damage, but you couldn't stop. That is the separation of your nature. God separates it very strongly in chapter 8, verse 1. Again, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So there's a bunch of ways to illustrate this, but understand, God wants you to separate your flesh from your spirit, your flesh from your mind. You are, if you're born again, if you receive Jesus, a three-part creature, body, soul, spirit. That's what you are. If you're not born again, you're a two-part creature. You're a body and a soul. Your soul is your mind, your intellect. Your body is your body, and that's the flesh. And your spirit is what fellowships with God. When you sin, your spirit dies, and you have no living spirit. That's why you must be born again. What is born again is you're born of the spirit, John 3, 6. Your spirit is born again, and now you're a three-part creature. Now you can fellowship with God. You can't even fellowship with God, know God, you can't do any of that until you're born again. Okay, you're, you're spiritually dead, the Bible says. You're just a body and a soul. That's why Matthew 10, 28 says, fear not him which is able to destroy the body, but is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. He never mentioned spirit because there is no spirit in an unsaved person. So God says you're a body, a soul, and a spirit. Your, your body is your flesh and it wants to do wrong things. It wants to commit adultery. It wants to steal. It wants to be selfish. Uh, put, put a little kid in a room, <clears throat> put two kids, one toy, you'll find out it's built in. They can be one years old, they'll fight over the toy. The kids don't say, you have toy. They don't do that. Why? Because they're depraved. Even sweet little kids, we all have a bad nature in us. There's one candy bar uh, left on the counter, and you and another person are walking toward it. You both start walking faster and act like you're not doing it. And uh, why? Because it's, it's your nature. It's my nature. doesn't mean you do all that, but it just it's in you. Uh, the thoughts you think, that you have a, a, a depraved mind. And so you might want to do right, but also you have this war, it says, that says, I do wrong. And there you've got to separate your flesh and say, this flesh is something that's temporary that I'll live with until I die. Then I get a new glorified body without the fallen nature, and I won't be tempted anymore. But in the meantime, God says, hey, understand, this is the flesh. This is why you're doing that, because when you separate it, you can know how to deal with it. Amen. You ever had a car? Okay, let's think about a car. You can separate a car. You ever had a car that had a terrible outside? The body was all beat up, but the engine was great. How many still have that? And, uh, and, and you, you have that car. <clears throat> and so you look at that car and you say, you know what? 
you've separated the car in different parts. Look, engine and tranny are great. Drivetrain's great. The body, I know it looks like a junker, but this thing runs great. Okay? You ever had a car that looks great on the outside, but runs horrifically, and everything's wrong with it? Okay? And, and, and there's, there's brands like that. There's entire types of cars that are known for being beautiful cars, and people in the know say those things are pieces of junk. Okay? Just because it looks pretty, just because it looks pretty doesn't mean... Have you ever met a person who's beautiful outside but not inside? You ever met a person who's beautiful inside but not outside? Okay, you're able to separate these things, right? Okay? <clears throat> and, and, and God talks about our flesh as a part of us. It's not good. And you got to deal with that thing in that way. Understand, it's part of you, but you've got to deal with it that way. Separate it and understand that. Secondly, underneath that, it is what, it is what, uh, what you walk after that gives the victory. Romans 8.1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Walk uh, means tread all around. It means walking after. In other words, you're, wa- you're walking after something. It's leading you. It's your lifestyle. What is leading you? In every area of your life, you are led by something. So we're a body, a soul, and a spirit. God's intention is you are led primarily by the Spirit, secondary by your soul, which is your mind, your intellect, and thirdly, by your body. Okay? Almost everybody is led opposite. They're led, they start off with their flesh, what they want to do, then their mind and what they want to do in their mind. Their flesh is what it, it says, I want this. I want to sleep in today. I don't want to get up. Snooze button. Flesh says, not enough snooze. Snooze button again. Flesh says, oh, one more time. Oh, I need to get up though. Your mind is telling your body, you need to get up your body saying, "Uh uh-uh. And so your mind rules and boom, you can't do anything about it. And you do it again. The spirit says, get up and read your Bible a half hour early. Your body says, no way I'm doing that. Your soul says, I want to do that, but I could also use a half hour sleep. And you got this war of body, soul, and spirit, but you need to be spirit led. They walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. It says, if you're led by the Spirit, you're the sons of God. Uh, Verse 14, Romans 8. It's all over the Bible being led by the Spirit. And what leads you? So you can do this in any area. Let's let's pretend get a church. You want to know, what church should I go to? What's going to lead you into what church you go to? If the flesh leads you, you say, I want a church that has fun things there. I want music that jams for Jesus, and I want to have fun, and I want to feel it, and I want a cool building. I want a good coffee shop in the church. Everything you just said is all about your flesh leading you, right? You're going, I want the coffee, and, uh, and, and <clears throat> I, want, I want a beautiful building. I want, a, I want somebody who tells me how good I am and pats me on the back at church. I want a preacher that's really, really nice. You got lost. You're at the wrong place. And, uh, and, and I want somebody to build me up and tell me God just, God is so impressed with me. He doesn't know what to do with me. I want that at church. I want to feel good about me. That's all fleshy led. You're being led by the flesh. I want church with one in the afternoon service so I don't have to get up early. By the way, 11 is not that early, guys. Right? Okay, and uh, that, that, I thought I'd get some amens or something. I guess I'm at 11, 11 So it's not that hard to get here on time at 11. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> See, there I am, not making you feel good. And, uh, and, 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 you, and you go, and, and, and what is leading you? And somebody else says, I want somewhere where I can hear from God. I want to learn the Bible. Of the person, I want someone, uh, is there cute girls there? That's my church. Amen. Ugh, woman. You know. And, and well, that's not being led of the spirit. It's being led of the flesh. Okay? <clears throat> and so, what do you do? How do you choose things? What are you being led by? How, how do you choose your job? How do you choose who you date? How is the spirit leading you? 
Is your soul leading you? Your emotions leading you? Are you emotionally led? It's not healthy either. Okay? It's, it, your mind is better than just your body, but the spirit is the way we're supposed to be. Spirit, mind, body. You've got to be led the way God wants you led. If you begin to be led by the Spirit, you will begin to destroy the flesh and control the flesh, and the flesh will lose its strength. The Spirit will get so strong, it controls the flesh. Galatians, let me just take a Galatians chapter uh, 5 and read this. Galatians chapter 5. I'm not a tea guy. I'm a coffee guy. But coffee is not good for my throat. And I need to preach the Bible today. So what am I drinking? Tea. Tea. With lemon. And honey. Why am I doing that? This is, this is not a man's drink. Never mind. Um, but, uh, but, but I'm drinking this. Why? Because the spiritual is more important. Okay? It, it, and, and I don't want to be... I don't want to be led by just what I want to drink. I can't drink coffee today. I can't drink. I couldn't drink. I couldn't drink it yesterday because my voice. It's not in my voice having problems. Coffee's not the thing, okay. And <clears throat> and so I will drink that. I, I don't like that. Did what you like should not determine everything. It just doesn't. It's 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 a, it's a very it's a very animalistic, simplistic week. And you're not going to get it for work. You're gonna, you, your addictions will control you. Your anger will control you. People will control you. All kinds of things. It's just a simple, ugh, I want fleshly life. You live. It is what you walk after. Galatians 5, uh, verse uh, 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these uh, are contrary one to the other. So you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Follow what the Holy Spirit leads you in your life, and you will find victory. <clears throat> Next, it is not all willpower. Don't just try harder in the flesh, but put that effort into spiritual things. Amen. It is not all about willpower. Don't just try harder in the flesh, but put that effort into spiritual things. So many things to say right here. <clears throat> okay. You're not fighting the right realm when it's just you trying harder. So we can have someone get saved. They become a Christian, and they're a high-character person. They're a disciplined person. They, 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 uh, it comes out in a lot of ways. Um, they worked hard um, their whole life. They went to college. They graduated. They get up on time. They go to work. Um, they work out and keep their body in shape. They're a disciplined person with character, okay? When I became a Christian, I didn't have that advantage, okay? So that person there can do a whole bunch of things to get them in the right position spiritually just by their discipline, okay? And that's a blessing if you have that, okay? You can go to church every week. I've had people who say, I want to go to church so bad, I just can't seem to make it. Something always comes up. They're just not a disciplined person. Okay? Somebody says, I really want to read a Bible, but I just, I never seem to make time, and at the end of the night, it's just done. Okay. You, you, you're undisciplined, and you've got to get control of yourself. Okay? Because you cannot offer your body a living sacrifice to God. You cannot offer a sacrifice to God. Think of the Old Testament. Do you want to offer God a lamb? If you cannot control the lamb and catch it, you can't make it a sacrifice. If your body cannot, you can't get yourself under control, you can't give yourself to God. Okay, so that person, they, they, because they're disciplined, say, oh, I'm supposed to go to church? I'll go to church. What time? And they come to church. Why? Because they're disciplined. Another person doesn't have that discipline. What happens with this person, they got some advantages because good character is an advantage in life and in the spiritual realm. And I didn't have that, and I had to learn it. Um, but that person, eventually what happens to them, and this is really common, you have people, I guarantee in this room, who are high character people, successful people, do good in life, but they cannot get the spiritual life victorious. Why? <clears throat> because that discipline of theirs becomes what they trust in, and it can only take you so far. And then you've got to be spiritual. So this person, they say, man, I, I get up in the morning, I can get up whenever, I can, I can make myself read a Bible, I can go and make myself do this and that. And you say, yeah, and you really need to love your enemy. And they say, 
I'll try that. And then they try. I'm going to love them. I'm going to love them. They try their discipline, and it doesn't work. Because you know what? Satan sends a person who drives you crazy. And just when you bought it, I'm going to be kind. I'm going to be nice. And they walk in the room and do exactly what's going to drive you nuts and irritate you. And you say, I'm not going to do this. And then that person tries harder. But they can't do that. You can't overcome Satan. You can't pray. You can't, all of a sudden, all the really spiritual things, because you can go to church and not be spiritual. You can just show up at a location of a building at 11 o'clock. That's okay. How you respond is a big deal. All of a sudden, the guy's uppity and he's got pride because he's successful, and the preacher gets up and preaches on his sin. Who's that preacher think he is? And his pride gets up there. And he comes and says, hey, I want you to know, Pastor, I didn't like that. See, you know, it's like, like the guy walked up to D.O. Moody. He said, he said, hey, you're preaching rub the cat the wrong way. And D.O. And Moody said, then turn the cat around. Because we're petting the same way. And, 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 <clears throat> and, and so you go, and all of a sudden the guy says, you know what? I'm not going to listen to that guy. And his pride comes up, and then he realizes, you know, I shouldn't be doing this. This is dumb. I know I'm doing wrong, but... Now all of a sudden he's all out of kilter and he says, I gotta try harder. And he can't because now we're getting the spiritual. Okay? He can read his Bible because he's disciplined. It doesn't mean he can say, Oh Lord, that's me. Oh Lord, I'm gonna change. That's spiritual. So trying harder, so many times a, a disciplined person gets frustrated because they, they're used to fighting the fleshly realm, which is I'll get up, I'll work harder, I'll work more hours, or whatever they're used to doing, which, which overcomes a lot of things in the flesh. Look, somebody says to me, <clears throat> I'm running short of money. I don't know how to pay my bills. You working? Yeah, I'm working. Uh, how much is short? I'm going to be short $200 this month. Can you work overtime? Well, if I want to. Can you pray that God will meet my needs? I said, I'll pray that God will meet your needs, but I think God already has. Yes, sir. You're, you're getting time and a half, work five extra hours, work 10 extra hours, whatever. Do you see how the flesh can solve that? Yes, okay. And, and it can do a bunch of things, and then you just muscle through everything. But then you come in the spiritual realm, and it's the wrong realm. So what it's like is like you're mad at the person on your computer screen, and you just go, Bam, and you punch your computer screen. Okay. You just punch a computer screen, and that usually works in person. But in the realm here you're in, which is a computer, it didn't hurt them. Right? Because it's the wrong realm. Okay? And so, and by the way, I'm not endorsing punching people in the face in the person. Okay? I just, just, just in case. Okay? Um, and, and so... If, yeah, don't punch the computer screen. Go in person. I'm not saying that, okay? I'm not saying that. Don't, don't, don't start there. So you go, and you realize you're in the wrong realm. And in the spiritual realm, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You're fighting demons and devils. And you've got to go, and if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of flesh because you strengthen the Spirit so much, and the Spirit's so much more powerful, it starts fighting the flesh and pushes it back, and you get control of your flesh. You say you're getting up at a half hour early, and, and your soul says, all right, I'll, well, let's do that. And your body says, no, but your spirit and your soul are so strong, your flesh says, oh, man, I guess I have to, Oomph. and you get up. No snooze button that morning because you've... You've, you've led in the Spirit. And walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of flesh. Uh, someone told a story about a, uh, a long time ago, a Native American. <clears throat> he, was, uh, he was saved and converted, and then he, he started talking about learning the spiritual life and growing, and somebody met him. And, uh, you know, it was honor for the years ago. And he said, now that you're a Christian, what, do you, what did you learn about the spiritual life? And he says... A big war inside, he says, like I have a white dog and black dog inside me. He says, whichever one I feed more eats the other one. And that's pretty much it. 
you start controlling the flesh and feeding the spirit and lead, being led by the spirit and, and let your life be led by God and let the Holy Spirit move in your life. The flesh gets weaker and weaker and you pretty soon you're just telling your flesh, no, nah, you're not going to do that. And all of a sudden you say, no, you're not going to stay that flesh. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you say that. You stub your toe and say, glory to God. Thank God I have nerves. If I didn't have nerves, I wouldn't be able to feel anything and thank God for that. Glory. Instead of the unknown tongues you used to speak in when you stub your toe. Okay? Because your flesh isn't just out of control and doing what it wants to do. And you begin to control yourself. <clears throat> You learn to fight in that realm, and you learn to get that victory in that realm. It is not enough to, uh, just to have willpower. Don't just try harder in the flesh. Now, here's what, here's what you got to get. i got to catch you right here and stop you for a sec. Trying harder is important, but it's not trying harder in the flesh. It's trying harder. Take that same effort you put into, and put that into spiritual things. What you do is, instead of saying, I'm just not going to get angry anymore. And you go, okay, I'm going to count to ten. And you try in the flesh. One, two, three, I'm going to kill him. Three, four, five. And you just get madder and madder. Why is the number ten so high? Why ten? And, and you get madder and madder. It doesn't work. Okay? Instead, you say, you know what? I need to memorize some verses on anger. I'm going to do that. And there you put your effort in the spiritual things. I'm going to pray and fill with the Spirit. Because I'm filled with the Spirit, I get this fruit of love. I'm going to love my enemies. Joy. Peace. Long-suffering. Patience. And all of a sudden, you get filled with the Spirit. And you pray for God's power in your life. And pray for the Spirit to move. And you put that effort, instead of trying harder to not get angry, you put that effort and listen to the Holy Spirit in your life and read in your Bible. And God starts speaking to you. And you get filled with the Spirit. And all of a sudden, you're full of love and joy and peace and gentleness and long-suffering and patience. And all of a sudden, the person comes to you. And they're nasty. And you say, you know what? You know God loves you. And so do I. And you go, where in the world did that come from? But the spirit is leading and the flesh is weak. And the spirit just says, we're going to love. Because you put your effort, you tried, but you tried to be spiritual, not tried to control the flesh through the flesh. You understand? Trying to control the flesh with the flesh is very difficult. Very difficult. I told this story before, but I got any. We used to have a, a teenager in our church named Bill, and Bill was a scrawny kid who thought he was really strong. Bill, you ever know somebody like that? And he thought he was really strong. And Bill, Bill told me one day, he said, he said and Bill was not the brightest. <clears throat> and I said, Bill, Bill said to me, he said, you know, I can lift my own weight. I said, no, you can't. He said, yes, I can. He said, I can lift my own weight. I said, no, you can't. He said, yes, I can. I said, you're telling me if you were standing on a piece of wood, you could lift it. He said, yes. I said, I'll bet you 10 bucks you couldn't. He says, I'm telling you, I've done, I, I have lifted almost twice my weight now. I said, all right, 10 bucks, 10 bucks. I grab a two by four, we walk outside, put each end on the block. He stands on top of that two by four and he reaches down <laughs> and grabs a two by four. And all of a sudden he says, wait, no, that is not what I was saying. I said, I said you told me if you stood on the board, you could lift it. Who would have taken the money? Raise your hand. Who would not have? Why aren't you raising your hand? But you know, you using the flesh to, just, to fight the flesh, it's pretty hard. So, so what you do is you play whack-a-mole. Here's what you do. I'm going to stop smoking. And so you stop smoking and you start eating. And you quit smoking and you gain 40 pounds. Whack that mole, this one pops up. I'm going to quit drinking. And you start smoking weed. Because your flesh, all of a sudden you get a victory and all of a sudden you overcome some sin in your life. You know what you do? You go, man, I'm awesome. And now you got a big fat head of pride. 
And now you're living in pride because your flesh is weak. It's corrupt. You need the spirit to help you to go in and conquer the flesh and say, no, you're not going to say that. Hey, let me give you, instead of just saying, I'm not going to get angry, let's fill your mind with joy and peace. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And that's how you do that. And God has a way to do that. So that's number one, is you go in the spirit and you fight in the realm of the spirit and you put, you still try, but it's not just trying hard in the flesh, it's promoting the spiritual things, reading your Bible, praying, being filled with the Spirit, obeying God, going to church, all those things that are going to feed the Spirit and will help you. Number two, when trying hard, trying hard is not enough. Number two, what do, we, uh, uh, what do we do? Because our flesh is weak, avoid temptation. You ready? Really simple. It's way easier to avoid than resist you will find this is what's called wisdom. Matthew 6, 13, <clears throat> what's it say? It says, and lead us not into temptation. It doesn't say, Lord, help us not to sin or tempted. It says, lead us not into temptation. Let me go take you back to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is written mainly it's to help a son to avoid uh, being foolish and to give him wisdom, but a lot of it is to avoid temptation. Uh, let's do Proverbs 2 and verse 16. <clears throat> Guess what? A young man, if he's seduced by a beautiful woman, is going to have a very difficult time resisting temptation. He says, let me teach you how to avoid it. Chapter 2, verse 16, to deliver thee from this strange woman. Notice that deliver thee from, for even from the stranger with flat earth with her words. Deliverance from is better. Chapter uh, 6 and verse 24. To keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Uh, chapter 7 and verse 15. Therefore I came, I came forth to meet thee diligently and to seek thy face, and I have found thee. Ah, man, he's in big danger. Down to verse 24. Hearken to me now, therefore, ye children, attend to my words. Let not thine heart decline to her ways, nor grow astray into her paths. Notice just the avoidance of stuff. <clears throat> verse 5, chapter 7, verse 5. That they may keep thee from the strange woman. Keep thee from. Proverbs chapter 4, and verse 14 and 15 says wonderfully. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Don't even go near it. So, you're a spender, and you like clothes, and you keep on blowing all your money, and you say, I'm just going to go to Nordstrom's with a credit card and just look. Good luck with that. Especially a certain gender. I'm not going to say which one. Just a certain gender. I am, I, I need to lose weight. I'm going to go old country buffet and I'm just going to have salad. Good luck. Maybe, but you're putting yourself in a place of temptation. I'm finally sober. I, have, I, have been, I haven't taken a drink of alcohol in, I'm not saying this about me. I have not taken a drink, drink of alcohol in two months. And you're like, really? <laughs> I've not taken a drink in two months, but my buddies are down at the bar, and I'm just going to sit with them in the bar and just talk. Maybe you can do that, but you'll find it's a lot easier to avoid temptation to resist it. You're a pornography problem. You don't take your phone to bed. You get security on your phone. You get things that's, that, uh, that tells other people what you're looking at. If, if you have a problem <clears throat> with anger, you don't watch angry shows and listen to angry music. I just tell you, I can't believe how people listen to, they'll listen to music that talks about violence and hatred and anger and 
wrong and injustice and it's all about that stuff and they watch much shows about revenge and anger and and violence and this and that and they say oh, i just don't understand i'm so mad all the time i can't control it i'm like you don't understand really the guy who says to me i don't understand why i can't lose weight you eat like a horse it's not that hard and you watch violent stuff and angry stuff all the time you say why why Am I so angry? I can't control my temper. You listen to music about anger. You watch things about anger. You hang around angry friends. And then you say, why am I angry? I don't understand why you don't understand. Amen. How, you don't put yourself in that position of temptation. You're not strong enough. You're, the spirit indeed is willing. Jesus said, Jesus said, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And yet, Paul said, I have no confidence in the flesh. Yet many people have confidence that I can, I can handle this. Yeah. Okay, you're better than me because I can't. Right. Let him that thinketh that he standeth take heed lest he fall. Don't put yourself in that position. If you have a gossipy friend, don't call them when you have nothing to do. <laughs> right? Pretty simple. You're avoiding. I want to say, instead of trying harder in the middle of temptation... Why don't you take a couple steps back and not have to try so hard because you're not as tempted? Because you avoided temptation. If you have a drug problem, don't hang around druggy friends. It's just, it's just, it's just, it realized in our weakness. Remember the flesh is weak. And don't trust it. It'll lie to you. Oh, uh, you'll just take one. And and you know <clears throat> how many how many how many girls have gotten pregnant because we're not going to do everything we're just going to mess around a little bit yeah you're you have a lot of confidence in the flesh amen, amen. It, it, it 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 your flesh is weak and don't trust it and you will do better instead of trying so hard to resist okay avoid Avoid. That's the better thing to do. Wherefore, let him that thinketh that he standeth take heed lest he fall. Number three, last thing. Let God help you. Chapter Romans, go back to Romans 8. Romans 8, then we'll finish up and we'll watch a video, hopefully, if it's all good. Romans chapter 8. Let God help you. Here's the cool thing. The devil loves to make us think that we're in this spiritual battle alone and we just have to do it all ourselves. And God just watching, saying, you messed up. You messed up. Stop that. You loser. That's not what God's doing. God wants to help you. So Romans 6, we need deliverance from sin. Romans 7, I'm too weak to do it. Romans 8, God will give you the victory. Romans 8, 2. For the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. The Holy Spirit, first of all, he's a person who comes to live inside of you and receive Jesus. And the Holy Spirit will help you. In verse 2, we see that. He set us free. In verse 10, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Um, but if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Again, verse 26, likewise also the Spirit help with our infirmities. The Holy Spirit is a person. He lives inside of you, and he's going to help you get victory and help you control your flesh. Let him lead you let, and, and guide you and strengthen you. And, uh, and, 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 and it talks about that. Verse 14, if many are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. Let the Spirit lead you. Secondly, you have Jesus, and he'll help you. Jesus and God the Father, all of them are mentioned in this chapter along with the Holy Spirit. But verse 31, what should we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? God's for us. He wants to help you. Uh, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not also with him freely give us all things? He that... Uh, 
Uh, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather is risen again. And is he the right hand of God who maketh intercession for us? Jesus is there before God the Father saying, let's help them. Verse, uh, look at verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. More than conquerors through him that loved us. You see in the spiritual realm, God is for us. If God be for us, who can be against us? We're more than conquerors in that loved us. God is making intercession. God's helping. He's going to give us strength. He's going to give us wisdom. He's going to give us the power to overcome. You don't have to fight in the flesh. Let God help you. Say, Lord, I can't do this. I need your help. I know that gave me victory when I needed that. And many times in my life, I've just said, God, I can't do this thing. He's also given you the word of God to give you victory. John and chapter, let me go quickly to John and chapter 8. John in chapter 8, he's given us the word of God. The word of God will set you free. Verse 31, then said Jesus, those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue my word, then ye are my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Notice the truth comes from the word in the, ver- in the verse before. John chapter 17 The truth of the word of God will set you free. John 17 and verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The Bible talks about James by the washing of the water of the word. The word of God is a cleansing agent. It sets you free. In the spiritual realm, the Word of God does something. It lifts the spirit and strengthens the spirit and, and fights off evil and, 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 and stabs the demons. And it just does a bunch of things. So what you find out is when you spend a bunch of time in the Bible, you are transformed. Amen. Sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. So we get sanctified through the Word of God. It's the washing of the water of the Word. It cleanses us. It sets us free. And the Word of God will help you get victory. And I want to say... That effort you put into, no, I'm not going to get mad anymore. No, I'm not going to drink this anymore. No, I'm not going to talk like this anymore. The effort you put into doing that, maybe put some of that effort into reading your Bible every day. Meditating on the Word of God. Listening to preaching. Going to church and hearing the Word of God preaching. By the way, I just want to say this. It's getting so common now. It is not helping you if you go to a church where they don't preach the Word of God. They just read a couple verses and just talk. You need the Word of God preached to you. Okay, you need the Word of God preached to you. And there's a lot of churches who aren't preaching the Word anymore. They're just talking a pep talk and throwing a couple verses in for kicks. You need the Word of God. I told the story before. I want to tell it again. <clears throat> a grandson was with his grandpa up in the cabin, and grandpa was sitting there out in front of the cabin and uh, looked at the grandson and said, um... And this is a great illustration of the Word of God. He says, hey, uh, uh, little Jimmy there, go, go, go take that, uh, that basket there and go get me some water from the creek down there. So Jimmy grabs the bucket and he, the basket and he grabs it down there and he walks down and he dips it in the, dips it in the creek and he walks back up and he, he gets up there and he even notice and halfway up there he looks and he says, oh, this thing's already empty. It's a wicker, wicker basket. <laughs> and he walks up to his grandpa, the thing's empty. He says, go get me some water. Do I say, do I say, boy, back down, he goes to the creek, runs down there, dips it in the water, and he, this time he jogs back up there, and as he's jogging, he gets almost there, and he's like, it's empty again. Grandpa says, I said, give me some water. Try it again. He goes down there, he says, okay, this time I'm going to go so fast. He fills that thing to the brim, he has feet are ready, and he Bolts as fast as he can, keeps that thing as level as he can, runs up there, gets to his grandpa just as the last of the water is draining out. The last of the water drips out, and he's like, Grandpa, I tried, and I can't get the water out of that. And Grandpa says, <clears throat> he says, I, Grandpa, it won't, I can't do it. It won't hold the water. And he says, I knew that. I just need the basket cleaned. And I say with the Bible, you don't remember everything you read? Sometimes you're in a hard spot. 
So and so begat. I'm not supposed to do that. This new microphone, and uh, fixes everything. So and so begat. So and so, and you're reading this part and going, "What is it talking about?" And sometimes, but the water's flowing through you, and the washing of the water of the word. You know what you'll find out if you just spend a whole bunch. Take your effort and spend time to read your Bible every day. Get our Bible reading chart and read it every day. You will just say, "Man, it's getting easier to overcome this stuff." You know, I couldn't overcome that before, but now I am. Because you're fighting the spiritual realm, and the Word of God is changing you. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, and you just do that. I want you to go and realize that God is on your side in this thing. He wants you to have victory. You don't have to fight it yourself, and then God just staring and glaring at you. He wants to help you. He knows your flesh is weak. Jesus is the one who said, when he was fighting uh, to go to the cross and, and all that temptation. He says, a spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He knows how weak we are. He knows how wicked the world is and how many temptations. And by the way, can I just tell you, in the world you live in, you're not going to escape temptation. The world, it's just going to get brought to, it's going to get brought to you even if you try to avoid it. Now, you're putting yourself in a bunch more if you don't avoid it. So you got to be strong enough to overcome it. And it's not going to happen by your strength. You've got to not, it's not trying harder. It's fighting in the spiritual realm. It's avoiding uh, the, 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 the temptation. And it's letting God help you and asking for God's help to overcome instead of giving up and throwing up your hands because you tried harder. You're in the wrong realm. Let me take you to Philippians and finish up there. Philippians in chapter 1 and verse 6. These verses are beautiful about God wanting to help you. And God being for you. And the Lord wants to help you have victory. And by the way, if you're not saved, if you've been born again, if you've never received Jesus, you have no chance for victory because you don't have the Holy Spirit inside of you. You cannot fight the devil. You need to be saved today. Jesus died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again three days later because we're all sinners. We need a Savior. And that's the only way. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, it says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. God is not giving up on you. And God will help you until the very end. In chapter 2, and verse 13, says this, For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God put in your heart that you wanted to be a good Christian, that you wanted to be holy, that you wanted to have victory. God put that in your heart. That was God. But God also, not only does he give you the will to do it, but it is God that worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. You don't have to do it in your own strength. He's going to help you. So, you... Try harderers. Oh, I tried harder and I just get more frustrated. Try harder. But try hard in the spiritual realm. Not in your flesh. Not in, I'm just not going to think about this anymore. I'm not going to think about this anymore. You know who you are. You got to fill your mind with good things. And let the spirit control your mind. And ask God to help you and say, Lord, I can't do this. You who are... <clears throat> struggling with some sin, and you're saying, I'm trying hard, it just keeps on coming, I just can't stop it, just can't stop, you can't, your flesh, it's, your, your flesh is too strong, you got to beat that flesh back and get the spirit up, and the spirit will set you free, get into the word, ask for God's help, fight in the spiritual realm, quit punching your screen, don't be the dummy who when his team loses the Super Bowl, the guy grabs his TV off the wall and throws it, smashes it down, you didn't hurt your team, or the other team, it's the wrong realm, and go fight in the spirit and keep trying hard. But try hard by seek ye first the kingdom of God. Being led of the spirit. Spend some time in prayer. Take that effort that you've been trying in so many ways to stop doing this thing and spend some time in prayer. How about you come to every church service and put your effort into that? Can't control your anger. But take all the effort you've been trying to control your anger and put it into... Coming to church, reading your Bible, praying. Filling your life with God and let his peace and joy and love and forgiveness take over. Instead of, oh, I'm going to forgive him. Forgive. <laughs> How's that work? Doesn't work very good. 
Let the Spirit, let the Spirit win. Let the Spirit take the Holy Spirit inside of you and pound that flesh back. But don't just try to pound your flesh back with your flesh. So, if trying harder is not working, there's your answers there. And avoid, don't resist. Get some different friends, maybe. Maybe, maybe uh, fill your life with good things. It's a lot easier to, to do that. And then let God help you. Ask for God's help. And use the tools like the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and other things He's given to you. And you don't have to, all your effort won't just be frustrating. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the chance to preach your word today.